Hi everyone, this is the fourth video on coordinate geometry, coordinate geometry 4 and chapter 3. This is the last one, we're going to look at four application problems here, just four examples of how these uh, coordinate geometry techniques that we've been using, uh, how they come up in the exam and what they look like, the kind of questions you might get. So uh, just to, to recap, have a look at the other th uh, videos if you haven't already. We've, we've looked at working out the midpoint of a line, we've looked about We've talked about working out the length of a straight line, the gradient of a straight line, the equation of a straight line, and the relationship between parallel and perpendicular lines. So that forms the basis of these kind of questions that we're going to look at. So first example here, perpendicular bisector. So two words here, perpendicular meaning at 90 degrees to, bisector meaning going through the middle, bisecting it in half. Once again, sketch really helps. So I've drawn these two points. You don't have to have it as accurate as this, obviously. So minus 2, 5 and 4, 3. So we're looking for the equation of the blue line. Now remember, to find the equation of a line, we need two things. We need the gradient and we need a point on the line. Okay, so I'm going to get the point on the line by working out the midpoint of the line. So if you recall how to work out the midpoint, the average of the x values, so minus 2 plus 4 divided by 2, the average of the y values, 5 plus 3 divided by 2. So the midpoint over here is 1, 4. So that's a point on the line. Next, we need the gradient. Well, this line here is perpendicular to AB. So if I can work out the gradient of AB, then I can work out what the gradient of this blue line is here, the one we're looking for. So from A to B, the rise, we've gone from 5 on the y-axis down to 3, so the rise is negative 2. Remember, we're looking from left to right, so this line's going down. So I'd say the rise is negative 2, and the run from minus 2 across to 4 is 6. So the gradient is negative 2 over 6, and negative a third. If the gradient of AB is negative a third, the gradient of the blue line is the negative reciprocal. So turn that fraction upside down and change the sign, the gradient of the line is 3. Okay, we've got the gradient, we've got a point on the line, y equals mx plus c, we substitute in all those things that we know. The gradient is 3, the x value is 1, the y value is 4, giving us c equals 1. So the equation of this perpendicular bisector is y equals 3x plus 1. Second example, we've got three points that form a triangle. The perpendicular from A meets the base BC at the point D. Find the coordinates of the point D. Now that's really hard to get your head around unless you draw a little sketch. So once again, a, a sketch is, is really important here. So I'm going to go down to the sketch. Uh, you're not going to have it as accurate as this, obviously. And because I've drawn this really accurately, you can see what the answer is. But just to show you what we're doing here, we've got the triangle. The perpendicular from A, in other words, a line that meets the base of this triangle uh, at 90 degrees, perpendicular. And we're looking for the coordinates of that point right there, D. Okay, a lot of these problems involve the same thing. It involves finding the equation of two lines and then solving simultaneously to find the intersection of those two lines. So what we want here is the equation of B to C, which we can do because we've got both points there. And then we want the equation of A to D. Now when you're doing these, just remember that, really important. To get the equation of a line, you need a point and the gradient. So to get the equation of A to D, or the line AD, we've already got a point on the line. We've got A, we just need the gradient of this line. Now to get the gradient of this line, it's perpendicular to BC. So if we can get the gradient of BC, we can find the equation of AD. Okay, we can get the gradient and therefore we can get the equation. Okay, so let me go through this working here. To get the equation of BC first, uh, rise over run for the gradient, minus 3 over 6 is negative a half. We could use either point B uh, or C, but we, I've decided to use the point C. So the C is 4 minus 1, so I substitute those two in, giving me C equals 1. So there's the equation of B to C, negative a half x plus 1. And you can see from the sketch, it looks good. Okay, the equation of AD. Since we know that AD is perpendicular to BC, the gradient is 2. Remember the gradient of BC was negative a half. Therefore, the gradient of 
AD is the negative reciprocal of that. So turn it upside down, change the sign, is 2. Now we've, uh, also this line's going through the point A, which is 2, 5, so there we go. So they keep it right here. Gradient of 2 going through the point 2, 5, make sure you get the order right. X value there, Y value there, giving me C equals 1. So here is the equation of AD. So we've got the equation of the two lines, we want to know where they intersect. So we solve them simultaneously. We've got y equals this and y equals this. So therefore, 2x plus 1 equals negative a half x plus 1. So we're using the substitution method. We then multiply every term by 2 to get rid of the fraction. Make sure you multiply everything by 2, including the 1 here and here. So if we add x to both sides and subtract 2, we get this very simple equation. 5x is 0, so x has got to be 0. We've got the x value now, we substitute back into either one of these equations to find the y value. I think substituting it back into the equation for AD is simplest. 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. So the coordinates of D is 0, 1. Third example. This comes from a very similar question in an exam paper from a few years ago. We've got this trapezium shape kind of on its side. We're given the coordinates of 3 uh, points on the trapezium and the last question here is going to ask us to find this fourth point here D kind of leads us along asks us to find the equation of CD and BD and once again finding the point of intersection of those two lines is how we're going to get the coordinates of D okay so let's look at this uh, the equation of the line CD well CD is parallel to AB so it's going to have the same gradient so we're going to have the gradient of CD. We've got a point on CD, that's 6, 8. So therefore, we're going to be able to find the equation. For BD, it is perpendicular to both AB and CD. So we're going to be able to work out the gradient. And we've got a point on the line. Remember, that's all we need, the gradient and a point. So we're going to be able to work out the equation of BD, solve simultaneously to find their intersection. Here's the working. For A, the gradient of AB is negative a half. Remember, any line sloping down from left to right is going to have a negative gradient, so down 4 and across 8. So using point C, which is on the line we're looking for, the coordinates of C is 6, 8. Substitute them in. This is the key bit right here. Done this many, many times now, giving us C equals 11. So there's the equation of CD, negative a half X plus 11. For well, part B, if the gradient of CD was negative a half, the gradient of the perpendicular to that line will be 2, the negative reciprocal. In this case, we've got a gradient, a gradient of 2 and the point C is 8, 2. I'm oh, sorry, the point B. We're going to use the point B here. We're looking for the equation of BD. That gives us C equals negative 14 and therefore the equation of BD. Great, and now we're just going to solve those simultaneously. So 2x minus 14 equals negative a half x plus 11. Times everything by 2, same as we did last time. Add x to both sides, add 28 to both sides, gives us x equals 10. And for the y coordinate, we could choose either one of these equations. I've chosen the equation for uh, BD, 2x minus 14. So 2 times 10 minus 14 is 6. So the coordinates of D are 10, 6. Last example, uh, quite a tough one here. We've got, uh, and we deal with this stuff in calculus later on, we've got a straight line which is a tangent to this curve. Tangent means that it just touches it at one point, the point A. The normal to the curve, now this is another calculus uh, term, the normal just it means it's perpendicular to the tangent. Okay. So you can see in the diagram I've drawn it out which makes this a lot easier. We're trying to find the coordinates of B and therefore the length of A to B. Okay, so the first bit here you'll need to look back at your work if you're not sure how to do it. Look back at your work in quadratics. We're solving simultaneously the equation of a line and a quadratic. So we've got uh, y equals 2x squared is one line and y equals negative 4x minus 2 is the other line, sorry, y equals 2x squared is the curve. 
So putting those two equal to each other, putting everything on one side, it's a quadratic. Everything on one side equal to zero. Divide by two and factorize gives us x equals minus one. And that makes sense. There's only one point where this intersects. So you can see the x value there is minus one and the y value is two. So we've got the coordinates of A. The gradient of this line AB is uh, the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the blue line. So the tangent has a gradient of negative four at that point. Okay. So the gradient of the normal is one quarter. So we go through the same process again, substituting in the point with the gradient, giving us C is nine over four. We could call it two and a quarter, but nine over four is neater. So there's the equation of our line. Now I want to know where that line intersects the curve again. So we're solving simultaneously again. Okay, 2x squared, our original curve, where does it intersect the line AB? Okay, so times everything by four, everything on one side equal to zero and factorize, gives us two points. And that makes sense, minus one is gonna be one solution. We can see that in the curve. That's where A is, we've already got that point, but we're interested in B. We've now found that the x coordinates of B is nine over eight, or one and one eighth. And the y coordinate, substituting it back into the equation of the curve, 81 over 32, some nasty numbers here. So we've got B, a bit of Pythagoras' theorem now to give us the length of 2.19. A bit nasty there at the end. So there's four applications problems of the kind of questions that you might see in the exam for coordinate geometry.